You're listening to the 40 Thrive Podcast, the show created for women 40 and beyond, ready to shake things up. And now, your host, Jackie McDougal. Welcome to another episode of the 40 Thrive Podcast. Now, before we begin, I invite you, if you haven't already, to join us over in our free, exclusive, private Facebook group. That's where all the conversation around the podcasts or other expert advice and just talk and support and connection with other women in their 40s, 50s, 60s, and beyond. It all happens over there in the Facebook group. So if you haven't yet, hit the show notes here, and I will link directly to it and join us. We'd love to have you. All right. Now today, we are doing something different. I am throwing down a challenge. We're heading into November, the last two months of the year, and for many of us, it can be extremely stressful, lonely, overwhelming, and have lots and lots of negative feelings along with this whole like joyful holiday season, right? So I was thinking the other day, the month of November has a really important word in it, and that is the word no. How many times have you found yourself saying yes to things that just don't serve you, things that maybe stress you out, things that maybe break the bank, things that make you feel less than joyful, less than peaceful? There are things that really just don't work in your life. Now, we all have obligations. I'm not saying that we don't. Of course, there are going to have to be things that you say yes to, even though you don't want to. But I'm talking about those things that maybe just for 30 days, we can say not now. We can say no. We can say, I'm going to put myself and my mental health and my well-being and just my whole inner peace first. And so I invite you to join me for 30 days of November. That's right. We're going to find an area in our lives, just one even, where you can say no for 30 days and really just put yourself first. We, again, we're, we're headed into this season that is going to deplete us in so many ways. If we can just flex that no muscle for 30 days, I think it is going to make all the difference. So on today's episode, I talk with Christine Joyluck Sarno. Christine is an award-winning sales and advertising powerhouse. She's got like 20 plus years of leadership experience in media, promotions, tech. Go to the show notes and read her entire very impressive bio. But for me, the most important thing is she's my bestie. And she has a way of creating boundaries for herself that I've always admired, but more so as she has worked through her 40s. And so I brought Christine on because I think that we can talk about some of the ways that women feel depleted and spread too thin, but also have some like real tangible advice and tips to move forward in a way where saying no gets a little bit easier. So enough chatter from me. Let's just get right into it. My conversation with Christine Joyluck Sarno. A lot of people know you for your business advice and for your down-to-earth hilarity and your dance moves and all that good stuff. And for being this business coach for women and helping them ask for what they want and get what they deserve and all of that good stuff. But what they don't know is you're my person. That's right. <laughs> you've been, since 1996, That's you've been right. one of the most important people in my life. So, so much so that I don't know if you remember, but even my first baby, you changed his diaper before I did. Sorry, I'm an overachiever. <laughs> I got to take bestie to the next level, right? <laughs> so, you and I have talked about this, but I'm just announcing that I am laying down a challenge for November. The month November already has the word no in it. And so we're going to talk today about the power of no and where we can actually start saying it in our lives where we haven't been so much. So first of all, let's talk about this. Women over 40, how are we spreading ourselves too thin? How are we spreading ourselves too thin? I think, you know, women in general, we, I personally believe it's a function of our upbringing and kind of how we're taught to not command our space, even as little girls, we kind of defer, we defer to the guys. I think just 
from my perspective, we, we're just innately people pleasers. And that also is, it, I also think that's a biological thing. You know, we, we're, we're nurturers, we're, we're mothers, we're, we want to take care of people. And so this whole people pleasing behavior, I think is just something across the board that we all have to our own detriment. It's very difficult for us to say, no, we want to make people happy. And, and we feel a sense of accomplishment, right? Like we did right. something good or we did something right because we made somebody else happy or we fulfilled somebody else's needs. And I think we often do that because we attach that to our worth. Do you think that's a biological thing? Like you kind of touched upon that a little bit. Or do you think that's something that's programmed in us? Biological? You know what? What is that? Nature versus nurture? I think it's yeah. a function of both. I really do. I mean, you think about it. You know, most of us... Many of us have grown up watching a parent dynamic where, at least our generation, you know, where it was, you know, the man who went out and worked, right? And then it was the mom or the partner that stayed at home and took care of the kids and kind of supported the man and made sure that, you know, the food was on the table and, you know, the house was clean and that sort of thing. His scotch was like ready to go when he got home with his slippers. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) so foreign to me, that picture. (laughs) Because I can't, I can't relate to that in terms of how I live my life. Right. But that was my mom. And I, you know, and that's, that was my mom with my dad. That was my mom after my parents got divorced when she started dating and, you know, and and found a new partner. It was like, it was just, let's put the man on a pedestal. Let's make him feel like a king. It doesn't matter if I've got my own work, my kids to take care of. You know, it's okay if I don't have time for myself. I need to make sure my man is happy. And look, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying as women, we shouldn't incorporate that into our relationship at a certain level, because I think that that's, you know, again, I'm not going to speak for everybody. This is a broad generalization, but I think, you know, that's men like to feel as if they are important in that way. But I think sometimes we're just, we get to this place where we're over-serving mm. and we're over-serving so much so that we're, we're, we, we feel depleted. Like there, we don't even have time to stop and take a moment and reflect and go, man, I didn't get enough sleep. I didn't even get any like, like self-care time. Maybe I didn't get to that work project or that book or whatever it is, or that damn cup of coffee that's still sitting cold on the counter. Like, and right. that's, and you know, and so when we do take a moment to think back, it's like, we're, we're so in this kind of mode of just trying to take care of everybody else all of the time. Yes. And we do, and we wonder, why do we feel depleted? I mean, I really think that that's, you know, there's a lot to do with that. And, and, and it's so frustrating for me personally, because here's the thing, and, I, and I, I'm not trying to sound like, you know, some tough, uncaring kind of tiger mom type of person. But I think at a certain point in our lives as women, we do have to recognize that we may have reached a tipping point. And what I don't, I'm having a hard time for me personally, kind of catering to, and I know this is going to sound kind of harsh, but catering to um, women who are almost kind of standing in their space from a place of, I'm a victim, this is happening to me, I'm letting this happen to me. Right. At a certain point, we have to, to kind of say, okay, I don't like feeling this way. And it's time to make some choices about what's a priority. And what's not a priority? Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny because you don't have to be, I don't think you have to be a parent, a mom to be that person who's constantly doing for others, who's constantly trying to fill the need of others, to trying to please everybody. I remember, and you were at both of the 40 Thrive live events where Diane Wingert spoke, and we both know Diane, and, and I will link to Diane's episodes in the show notes. But Diane talks about that menopausal brain or that perimenopausal brain where we're like, how can I serve you? How can I serve you? And then one day we're like, get your own effing dinner, you know? And so I think you're right on target, not only with your personal development, but with your biology. Like our biology is literally saying like, yeah, I don't feel like coming up, going to Pinterest and finding (laughs) a healthful, you know, beautiful, like locally sourced dinner tonight. Get it yourself. I know, right? If you want locally sourced, go outside and source it locally. And you're welcome. Go, yeah, go to the local Ralph's. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> I think you're right on track when it comes to that. So 
you know, this is definitely not just about parenting. This is about how we show up in our relationships. This is how we show up in our friendships. This is how we show up at work. And so one of the things, you know, I have always appreciated about you, I'm not saying you're 100% at this, but you're pretty good at creating boundaries. You're pretty good at going, yeah, that's not going to work for me. Like, I understand where you're coming from, but that's not my problem. (laughs) Did you always have that? Is it as you're getting older? Like, where did you come up with this, like, wild concept of boundaries? (laughs) Well, first of all, thank you for the credit. You're too generous. I, I think I've just reached that place now and I'm still learning. Yeah. For me, you know, it's, and you, given the fact that we've been in each other's lives for a very long time, so I know that you also understand this about me, but, you know, my upbringing with the kind of parenting dynamic where my father was significantly older than my mom, he's American, and, you know, my mom, uh, was born and raised in Taiwan, came to this country in her early 20s, barely speaking English. She was very self-conscious, kind of the subservient role. Mm-hmm. And so that was what I had to, to, to model the way a woman would behave in relationships, at least in, in a marriage. You know, let's use that as a for example. And plus, my mom didn't work then, right? So right. I didn't have a career-focused mom that might have been able to to kind of teach me other skills about maybe how to set boundaries because you have you are a working mom and then what it's like to do that at work. Uh, so I had to kind of figure that out on my own. And I think for me personally, it's because my parents had such a volatile relationship. You know, my father dealt with alcoholism. He, you know, there was there was challenges in terms of verbal and some physical abuse in the home towards my mom that, you know, I had no choice but to learn how to be my mother's advocate and help kind of be her mouthpiece in terms of her interactions with people in general. We would be in the grocery store and, and, and you know, maybe a, a grocery clerk would be, try to explain something to my mom in a cashier receipt or something. And my mom didn't understand. And I had to kind of translate, you know, what's, what's going on here. So I think for me, it was, it was a little bit of a, a I guess, learned because it, it was more along the lines of this is, you know, this is about how to interact with others on a normal day-to-day basis, a little bit of like survival skills had to kind of kick in. Um, And, you know, and, and, and obviously it was, I think, motivated by, you know, how do I protect my mom? How do I protect this feeling of needing to protect? Right. And it sounds like you're saying also that you sort of had to create boundaries for your mom. Yes. Yes. That she wasn't necessarily in a place of confidence to do that for herself. So here you are, her young daughter, learning how to create boundaries for her. Yes. I've seen that in you. And so when we move into November now, and we're talking about saying no to things that don't serve us, what's something that you can do? Because obviously, we're not perfect. We're all a work in progress. Like, what is something that you could say no to during this month? I think for me personally, the ability to say no to feeling that I need to be obligated when I have because the amount of free time I have is so limited. And, and it, there's just a small amount of time that I have during the course of the week just for self-care, you know, and that could be as, as simple as just taking an hour to myself and having like a cup of coffee or tea and reading a book. And what I find that, and I'm very fortunate and very blessed to have this in my life, is I have a very full life. I have, you know, a, a, a beautiful social circle, you know, I call them in general, my friends are my family, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Of course, I have my family and then, you know, work colleagues and my kids and all that stuff. But I think I, I think this particular month for me is to say it's okay to say no to all the social obligations. It's okay to kind of take a pass on, on social invitations. And not that these people aren't important to me, but if it's cutting into some time where I can kind of recalibrate or regroup, then I need to be aware of that and, and say, oh, you know, maybe not this month, maybe give me right. this month to just whatever free time I have to use that to just kind of recharge my batteries a little bit. Because, you know, I do feel sometimes that when you're juggling a lot of balls in the air and you know that um, I'm a working single mom, I've got a brand new relationship that I'm 
you know, investing some time in, you know, from a career standpoint, it can be stressful, very time consuming. I've got two different kids that go to two different high schools. You know, it's just, it's, it's a lot sometimes yeah, it's to a lot. juggle. And, and, and it, I do, because I care so much, uh, feel guilty when um, people are extending invitations, especially those last minute ones where it's like, what are you doing? Hey, what are you, what are you up? The what are you up to today always gets me stressed out because it's kind of like, all right, I know you're looking for something to do and you want to hang out with me, but I might just not have the bandwidth for it, you know? So. It's a lot. Yeah. And, you know, I think that's a great tip as we move into Thanksgiving is this month and a lot of 40 Thrivers will be around family, maybe family that some of them may fill up their cup, some of them may not. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and so I think really, really assessing the month ahead at like what is going to be required of you or asked of you and being able to sort of make choices before they're emotionally charged. Yes. You know what I mean? Like if someone's reaching out to you two days before Thanksgiving and that now you have to stop at three places and that's going to really stress you out. Like we don't always have to say yes to everything. We don't always have to say yes to everything. And I think we are a million percent allowed to be honest with why we're not saying yes. You know, I'm not saying that we need to necessarily socialize as a family yeah. and friends. I like, would come, but I don't like you. <laughs> right. That doesn't to, work right. as well. No. Right. I mean, I, obviously, it's, it's, it's in our best interest and everyone's best interest to use some finesse to maintain or protect your space. I'm trying to remember. I think I read this about a week or so ago. It was a tweet from Susie Moore. Are you familiar with her? I think she's a, oh, yeah. she's a coach. Um, uh -huh. I read this online and I thought it was so interesting, the difference. We don't necessarily have to say this to others, but maybe if we think this as women, it might allow us to empower ourselves a little bit more. But what she was saying is like, one, flip the switch from responding to demands or requests or invitations, all of it, from, you know, I'm sorry, I don't have time for this, to this is not a priority right now. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. And we don't necessarily, again, we don't necessarily have to say that to a family member, right, that wants to spend some time with us. I certainly wouldn't want to say to my sister, you're not a priority to me right now. But if I'm in a place where I'm just, there's a lot going on. My mom uses this analogy that sometimes in life, especially as women, you know, we're kind of functioning with the water level, like the water is rising, the water level is kind of hitting the, the top of our upper lip. And we can still breathe, right? Because our nose right. is above level. That's kind of a dangerous place because it does. It takes one more thing to kind of tip the scale where that water now right. is above your nose, right? Maybe it's okay for us to look at requests that are being made of us and say, you know, that's going to actually take that water level past where I can feel like I can breathe. And it's all right for me to take a pass on this right now. Right. Yeah. I love that. And and the other thing too is on the flip side of that, when we say I don't have time for, and there are things that we try to pretend that are priorities, it's like c total BS. So like people who are like, I don't have time to work out. Listen, there are probably three people on the earth that probably don't have time to work out. I don't know. They have stuff going on. But most of us, for most of us, they're is some sort of time, even if it's a 10 minute hit workout, you know, so you're absolutely right that it's not, I don't have time, but it's more, this isn't a priority. And I think mm -hmm. it's not only healthy to think like that, it actually shows us, I, I, I think we can lie to ourselves a little bit like, oh, I don't have time. But in, in fact, it's not a priority. And so once you're honest with yourself and you say, hey, you know what? This thing is not a priority for me right now. Then I think you're just much more aligned with who you are and what you want. I agree with you wholeheartedly on this. And you know what I find that's interesting, especially at this point in our lives that women are starting to become aware of this and actually kind of exercise this power, so to speak, you know, is that friends and family and business colleagues that are used to always getting a yes. You know, I say pay attention if you start sharing this type of feedback, giving this type of response in a loving way. I'm not saying we need to go, you know, 
F you, I don't have time for you. Because <laughs> <Right. laughs> right. Even when we want to. Even if we want to, because of course that's <laughs> going to elicit, you know, maybe the kind of response that I'm about to describe here. But I, I truly believe that people that are so used to how accommodating we have been, they're going to push back and they're going to may take offense to it and they may say, say something about it or feel hurt or whatever it may be, but pay attention because, you know, I think in those relationship dynamics, that's a really great indication that it's time to start maybe shifting that relationship dynamic in this direction where these people understand that um, you are starting to create healthy boundaries for yourself right? In the hopes that that can kind of continue to evolve into healthy relationship. Right. It might be uncomfortable for them, but that's not, that's not your job to make everyone comfortable. Truth with a capital T. Let's give my listeners some areas of their life. Like in case you're listening right now and you're like, okay, socially, I'm not, that's not really a struggle for me. What are some of the other areas that we could be looking at in our lives to say no this November? I know sometimes to mass amounts of sugar that start with the holidays and even alcohol. Oh, yeah. Paying attention to opening up that bottle of wine. Maybe that's something you want to say no to. What are some other thoughts that you have, Christine? How about not feeling the pressure to have to, you know, the holidays are around the corner and a lot of people start shopping early. And I think there's like this again, this kind of like this pressure to start kind of spending to make other people happy. Yes. You know, like, oh, you know, I, you know, I got to make sure I've, I've got, you know, the right gifts for my kids or, you know, what, what should I get for my boss or that sort of thing. You know, I started implementing something like this um, a couple of years ago with a lot of my close friends. And it was like, guys, let's just put the wallets away and let's just carve out quality time with each other. It doesn't have to necessarily be around the holidays when it's so heightened, but let's just make a plan for us to have special time together. And let's take that pressure off the table and create memories. Right. If you are buying gifts, like I love to buy experiences, you know, where you can go and do something fun and different adventurous, even if it's a hike and it costs nothing and you've done a little coupon. We're so worried. You're right about like, how much did they spend? I now I have to match it. Right. including tax. Like, right. it's just instead of like going and giving somebody something that just feels good. I agree with you wholeheartedly. And that's generally how I prefer to gift anyway. Time is so precious. We know this now. I think at this age and stage too, we realize so many of us have limited free time that when we want to spend free time with somebody, you know, it just, it's so much more meaningful, right? I want to make that time count. And I mean, you, how about you and I? Like, you know, for the amount of times that we get to actually be together in person over the course of our friendship, just with work, with family, with a whole host of things. It's like, you know, I don't, hun, I don't want to, don't give me a birthday or a Christmas gift. (laughs) Your birthday's coming up. Right. (laughs) Don't give me any gifts, like just time with you when we can make it happen. That is, that to me is everything, you know? This is absolutely this gives us all kinds of wonderful memories that we can laugh about. <laughs> right. I mean, life changes. Do you remember in our 20s, we'd be like, hey, let's go run some errands. And it'd be three days later and we're still hanging out. <laughs> yes. Oh, my gosh. I miss those days. It would just just get away from us. And now it's like, you know, oh, let's look three months in advance. And right. see How's that random Tuesday? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then, you know, there's always a sick kid or a fire. And, you know, we're supposed to be in person today and there are fires in LA. So it's like, there's always something um, getting in the way. And so you just kind of have to make it happen when you can anyway. Absolutely. Well, I definitely challenge the 40 Thrive listeners to look at one, even just one thing in your life in November that you're going to say no to. You don't have to be mean. You can say it with respect and love, but it's just all about setting boundaries and living in a way that feels good, that you're not just a victim, as you were saying, of the circumstances around you, but that you feel like you're making choices that are right for you. Right for you and support the things that you want out of life and how you want to spend your time, you know? Right? We often forget we've got our hands on the steering wheel. This is our car to drive. It's our life. And if you can say no for 30 days... Imagine what you can do next month. 
like, <laughs> let's let's flex that muscle. Let's give it a little timetable. That's right. Because it's not as overwhelming. Right. You know. And I am going to take on this challenge, you know, not only because it's a fabulous idea and I love how you're renaming, you know, kind of this November theme and concept, but because this is my birthday month, this is going to be a gift to myself too. So there you go. Right. So you just gave me my birthday <laughs> gift, girl. Done. See that? Happy, happy early birthday. Hey, so before we go, I have to ask you, because I ask all my guests, what does it mean to you to 40 thrive? I feel like it's such an empowering transitional time in a woman's life that I think it's okay for us to not have any hard outcomes about the future. And it's okay for us to go with the flow and take our life as it comes now, because it's such a time of discovery and self-awareness for so many women that it's okay not to have all the answers, right? It's to be a lot more forgiving of ourselves and to be open to what the future still holds. I think we're starting to realize there's so much more that we are capable of, that the possibilities are endless. And to be in your 40s and to start to have that realization, I think is amazing because that's just going to continue on, you know, for the rest of our lives. It's a beautiful place to be. I agree. Beautiful. But you perfectly said. Christine, thank you so much Aww. for doing this. Thank you for having me. I love you. I love you. And you're the perfect person to have on. This to me is a celebration of boundaries the whole month. And like I said, if we can do it for 30 days, imagine how we can change our lives. That's right. Uh -huh. Thank you so much for listening. Now head on over to the private Facebook group or Instagram and jump into the November challenge. I want to hear it. What are you going to say no to in November? And if you have a friend who could use this message, please consider sharing it. The more women we can get to listen to this podcast, the more women we can get to thrive. And I just want to share this message with as many women as possible. So please keep it going and share with a friend. Until next time, take care and keep thriving. Spring has sprung, and with the change of seasons, sometimes comes an increase in vitality. If you're feeling in the mood for a little more personal time, may I suggest Coconut. Coconut is all about providing clean and natural ingredients when you're enjoying your most intimate moments, with or without a partner. Naturally safe products developed by people who are obsessed with quality. Get 15% off with promo code GROWNASS at grownasswoman.guide forward slash Coconut. That's 15% off with promo code GROWNASS at grownasswoman.guide forward slash Coconut.